Hey, before we start today's show, we want to take a second. It's June 1st, and that means <laughs> the ultimate draft kit it's is here. here. It's been released. We want to take a second and let you know everything that's inside the ultimate draft kit now available at ultimatedraftkit.com. We're talking about premium rankings across every single position, including top 200 and auction prices. We've got expert lists for breakouts, busts, values. These things, you got to take a look at them. They're awesome. Stat projections from all three of us, including our averages. You got 100 plus player profile videos, tons of reports from coaching changes all the way to strength of schedule, including the beginning and end of the season. And this year, for the first time ever, exclusively from NFL.com's Matt Harmon comes reception perception. He has charted out the top 50 wide receivers and the rookies, bringing you all that good information so you can identify who's going to break out, who's going to bust, and we're going to keep adding to this thing all off season long. This is not like a magazine you get at the store. This is bigger. This is better. This is the ultimate draft kit. So check it out right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast coming to you from the fantasy jocks.com studios with your host, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, what a relief it is for it not to be May anymore. <laughs> Justin oh, Timberlake, get out. Gonna be Jones. Another it eleven just doesn't have the ring. No, another eleven months to wait, and I don't have to deal with JT. Let's get through this stupid football season and back <laughs> to May. That's the main event. Welcome to the show, the fantasy fall. <laughs> The fantasy footballers back again. Andy Holloway, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? I'm doing okay. Uh, Jason had, Moore is here. We had a little celebratory lunch. We've been working our our booties Keisters off right to off. get this draft kit ready for June 1st. May have celebrated with a little pazook. A little action. pazook. Now look, it's still the year of health, but the but a little pazooki action happened for lunch, and I am a little sluggish. I know I'm, some poor souls might not know what a pazooki is. I've never turned a pazooki oh. down. A pazooki is a uh, baked. It's a pizza cookie. It's a pizza cookie. Yeah, it's a cookie baked in a in a pan and then with ice cream on top. And Mike ordered two of these <laughs> for the four of us to eat. <laughs> and then when Mike walked away from the counter, I ordered a third one because I didn't want to be in a. Uh, look, you don't want to be caught. With a lack of pazuki. It's dangerous. You it's go frightening. Big or you it's go scary. home. All right. Quick question of the day, gentlemen. Great show today, is it by the way. Related? It's not pazuki related. Quick question of the day. I wanted to ask this one. I don't know if we've asked it before. What is your biggest fantasy football pet peeve? Mm. Pet peeve. Something that annoys mm. you in and around fantasy football. I'll leave it broad. I'll leave it wide. What is your biggest fantasy football pet peeve? I'll jump in here, and it has to be. This is the worst. Uh, it's it's non-responsive owners. It's I'm trying to open a dialogue here to talk trade. Uh, and maybe I'm to be active. Right. And it, maybe I'm forced to use only the trade system from uh, from my online provider. And I write a little note that says, hey, you know, what do you what do you think about this? Do you like this deal? Is this a good starting point? And then, then you get nothing. Squad douche back. You wait a couple <laughs> days, and it's what is the what's the protocol here? How long do I wait before I send a poke that says, like, "Hey man, just is this good? Have you seen it? I mean, just just respond. If you don't like it, just just send the no right back. I'm a I'm an adult. It's I'm a, a full grown man. I can handle <laughs> a no. It's a button click. But I just respond. Just have some human decency. Sure, I think that's a great one. I think that's a great one. When you participate in a league, you should reply to trade offer. You have a responsibility. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to uh, jump unless, in. Unless oh. you're straight trolling. Someone gives me a, a horrendous trade offer, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the whole yeah, no response. Look, that's fine. This is what you get. I send great offers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's mine. Here's my fantasy football pet peeve, and I've seen it oftentimes, and it even bothers me when it benefits me, okay? And this is – Knee-jerk fantasy football. This is chasing the points. This is no matter who did good, did well. Yeah, there you go. No matter who did well the week before, no matter who did poor this week, that is the only player that a fantasy owner cares about. We've I, I've run into this in various leagues where uh, maybe a, a player has one big week. M you know, Miles Austin has a monster week, and 
he is the most valuable player. You cannot acquire him from this owner. He's never going to trade him. Or maybe a really good player has a poor week, and this person doesn't want anything to do with him. I think it's bad strategy. It bothers me as a fantasy football analyst because – if you chase points that way, you will always lose. You cannot repeat those type of performances if you are trying to go grab the guy that had the one outlier good week. And generally, things return to the mean when it comes to a player having a very bad week. I hate to see fantasy owners fall into the trap of, boy, this guy's a bust. I better just get rid of him for anything instead of holding on to them, having some patience, and playing without that knee-jerk type of reaction. See, I think I, that's a good first step in fantasy ownership. Yeah, I would, I would uh, ag agree that I would hate to see like the Foot Clan listeners doing that, but that's certainly not a pet peeve to me. I love those, those as owners. As an analyst. Yes. As an analyst, it is. It's as just a, one of those things where it's like, it, l listen, people, what Andy's bringing up is always out there take advantage of and the we people talk about it throughout who, the year who, yeah who just you know the, some guy on your team goes off find the guy that always believes in that the, always in, buys high in that week you guys remember kevin ogletree oh yeah the, the trace touchdowns week one yep and it was the fab explosion and everybody went after him for oh, sure that was great uh, all right so my I, i've got two pet peeves one is a a personal and one is a, a helpful my personal pet peeve is whenever we're in a when I'm in a draft and there's a guy that has my same opinions right in front of me. Ah, oh, that's like that's the worst. Where you know, especially yeah. in our drafts where we're not snake, and it's just like you snag him every time. Um, it's but my uh, goal of every draft. But uh, when I'm in front of Jason, I don't even draft players that I want. <laughs> you right. just try to get the guys. <laughs> I blow up my team. For no, Jason. <laughs> my my real pet peeve though would be the tendency to overvalue the unknown. Which, which always means that we are undervaluing the known commodities in fantasy football. And we see this all the time, especially in the offseason, because in the offseason, we're always talking rookies. You know, the NFL draft is coming. It's dynasty football. So the, the young could-bes are just so elevated versus, you know, the known commodities who just get the it regular done. regular bees? In, in, you know, every, every single season. I went and I looked at the, uh, the top 12 finishers at each position this, this last year. Of quarterbacks, you know how many quarterbacks uh, were not previously, had not already had a top 15 quarterback season? So a breakout, someone who was in for the first time. Yeah, someone, there was or one. they weren't in last year. There was <laughs> one. It was, it was Dak Prescott. He did it. Uh, how, about, uh, how about wide receivers? You want to know how many uh, were not a top 15 I do. How many? wide receiver before that? There, there, were, there were two. One was Michael Thomas, a rookie, and one was Devontae Adams. Tight ends, there was just Cameron Bray. E you know, it's like th these guys have all done it before, and maybe it's boring because you go, ah, eh, he's, he's all right, but his ceiling, I don't think he could be a, a top five guy. Don't undervalue those, those type of players that just get it done year in and year out. It's, it's silly to uh, overvalue free agents that move teams because it's, it's exciting and unknown, whereas, you know, there are players where we know what we're going to get, and it's going to be relevant fantasy points draft those guys there is a certain amount of appeal by i mean a certain amount i mean a very large amount when you're playing nostradamus fantasy football and you get that, that <laughs> one particular thing right i mean that's something you hang your hat on for years for you hold that against your league mates like well yeah. but remember in 2007 <laughs> when i had scooch my boots that was great uh oh, there's an allure to the unknown, yes. uh, and players switching teams. Brandon Cooks goes to New England, and all your brain sees is it makes all the positive mental connections between Tom Brady and Randy Moss and, oh, when they ran up the score. And, look, you only put the pieces together you like when the, the new narrative is being written. So I think that's a good point. What I liked about that was the high – you know, you did those numbers. And what it highlighted for me was that there's only going to be one or two – breakout players that can come from unknown into relevance or into hyper relevance, I would right. say top 15, top 12. Now that doesn't mean it's still not attractive at times because you know, you still think a guy can maybe get into that top one or two because you've never seen him there. But I, I, I love that. I'll, I think it's a I'll, great point. I'll say this. If you are one of those people listening and going, no, I love, I love grabbing that guy. Like Mike says, then, then steer towards running backs 
because running backs do have much more volatility. And we see guys, you know, for, for running backs, there were four guys who had never been in the top 15 that finished as top 12 guys this last year. And that, and that speaks to rookies, too, because, you know, in the last decade, there have been 16 rookie running backs who finished as an RB1. So that's 1.6 a year for wide receivers. I was blown away when I was looking this up. You know, we, we remember 2014 was just a couple years ago. There were three wide receivers. That's when the narrative changed. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you had uh, Kelvin Benjamin, Michael Tom, uh, uh, Mike, Evans. Mike Evans, and Odell Beckham. And then, of course, this last year, you had Michael Thomas. So, you know, you're like, oh, there's four guys in recent memory. That's how it is. But in the last decade, there's four guys. Those, those are them. There haven't been any other – uh, rookie wide receivers Those to finish as top 12. Those are, Those are them. Those are them. Those are these them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not hey, <laughs> moving on. If you want to follow the show, you can do so on Twitter <laughs> at the FF Ballers. Figure it's a good time to let people know if you're listening to us right now. We are two days a week on uh, the regular show, Tuesdays and Thursdays, until July. In July, we move to three times a week. And then it's August. And from August through December, we're five days a week. So make us a part of your day every day come August. Uh, very excited about the upcoming year. Twitter, it's at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. The fantasy community is jointhefoot.com. And uh, we're on iTunes. If you like to leave reviews, support the show. We're actually going to read one of those right now as we do from time to time or as Jason does from time to time. So we like to say thanks to our listeners. So we'll get into a review. Review Asaurus Rex. This one comes in from D dot R eighty eight. D daughter. We'll, I believe that's we'll Des Bryant. That's Des. It's, that's probably it's true. Pronounced the daughter. The daughter. The daughter. <laughs> I'm going with Des. This one comes in from Des Bryant. Oh wow! Uh, wow. Fantasy football <laughs> is fun and everybody loves it, but at the end of the day, we're all after the same thing. Glory. That's why we like those other guys. Be before 2014, when I started listening to the ballers, I had zero playoff wins in seven leagues since 2010. Since 2014, 11 teams, seven championships, what? including a three-for-three three sweep what? in 2016. These guys are fun, hilarious, and most of all, informative. They know their stuff and help you out when you're in a jam. Their advice takes the average of the three of them, and usually usually they <laughs> steer you in the right direction. Uh, even with their growing fan base, they take time to answer questions on Twitter, their site, and even Sunday morning periscopes. Thanks, Mike, for taking the Sunday morning hey, periscopes. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks and for listening to the you, show. thank you, D-Daughter88. That's yeah. a, hey, thank you so much, D-Daughter. That, that means a lot to the show, and it does. These reviews, they, they help us out. If that's... I'm blown away over here. That, that's spectacular. I hung a sign. That's about winning. I hung a sign in our office a couple weeks ago, uh, an abbreviation that said, remember why you do this. Because we started this show, and we were small. And the listeners have come, but we still take that type of small show approach to everything we do. This is what we do all day, every day. We're here for the long run, and we appreciate all of your support and your reviews. Absolutely. Let's get into some fantasy news. News and notes from around the league. All right, I have a special news segment specifically for today's news because there, you know, there is news. Corey Coleman went down, freak injury the other day. He'll be out for a little while, fell on the football, trying to extend for a one-handed catch. So he's going to miss some time. That's news, okay? And then there is, well, well there, there's the hype train. Uh oh The hype train coming into the station, guys, and I have a number of of pieces of news and quotes <laughs> that I'm going to bring up to you guys. And I want to know if you are buying or selling the hype that exists in these headlines. Okay. And we're a headline culture, right? Sometimes, Certainly. sometimes that's all we read. We don't even know the details. It's a lot beneath easier. There. It is right. <laughs> don't even click the link. Just read the headline and then like retweet it to your friends and tell them how, uh, you know, Hunter Henry's the best player in the entire world. So here, I'm going to read you some headlines. I want to know if you are buying into the hype or you're selling it. Let's start with the aforementioned Hunter Henry. ESPN Chargers reporter Eric Williams expects sophomore Hunter Henry to be the Chargers, quote, main tight end this season. We know Antonio Gates is still on the roster. Do you buy the hype on Hunter Henry? Well, also in this report, or it could have been another one that, uh, that was feeding into this, 
They spoke of Antonio Gates. They're going to save him a little bit more, but that's for third downs and red zone work. Makes sense. So Antonio Gates, he's still going to be around and get those touchdowns. And how did Hunter Henry have any kind of value last year? From eight touchdowns. It was not from his yardage. Uh, it could go up. I, f- I think this report is interesting because in the way I was viewing the, the Chargers situation was Antonio Gates will have one more year of being the main guy. But it's, it's not shocking that they're going to rest him a little bit more. Antonio Gates, is he entered the league in 1974. Right. That's, That's how true. long he's been playing. So, yeah, give the, give the old guy a little bit of rest. Use him in really crucial situations. But even if this is true to me, this – this doesn't mean that Hunter Henry's a top five, top seven guy to me. Yeah, Let me okay, I, I, I'm going to just move to the next sure. one since we have a bunch and give it to you, Jason. According to ESPN, Patriots reporter Mike Rice, James White has, quote, won over Coach Belichick and Tom Brady with his steadiness and continued improvement. I think that's what I've seen. Certainly the Super Bowl attests to their confidence in James White. What does this mean for James White, Deion Lewis, Rex Burkhead, Mike Gillisley, and whatever other running backs they've signed since I started this sentence. <laughs> yeah, look, I I believe the report. I I genuinely do. I think this is one of the better beat writers out there. And so you've got to you've you've always got to consider the source and say, you know, is it just coming from someone who had a deadline and he covers ten different teams and you know or whatever a deadline headline. This uh, I believe this is true. However, uh, it is a, more so an off season you know hype train mentality because what's going to happen is you he they're going to really like James White but they're going to game plan for each opponent on a weekly basis and so maybe it shows you that he has carved out possibly more of the pass catching role and so I'll look at the numbers that I gave James White and say maybe I'm not seeing him involved enough in in my current numbers but it's not the type of report where I'm saying oh man James White, he's going to take over as the predominant running back here uh, for New England. So I, I would I would say more on the hype train All right. than uh, actionable fantasy news. All right, this one is near and dear to my heart. Not only my hometown Arizona Cardinals, this hype train, uh, this hype news about Chad Williams, but he's a dynasty player on one of my rosters as well. Larry Fitzgerald quoted as saying third-round wide receiver Chad Williams – Reminds him of Anquan Bolden in some ways, and I read this specifically talking about his hands, how strong his hands are, the ball sticks to him and does not move. Are we undervaluing Chad Williams and overvaluing John Brown as a return to uh, value this year? Mike, what do you say about this one? Well, when you're factoring John Brown, I I still love John Brown as a bounce-back candidate. I do have faith in Chad Williams. It's nice to hear Larry talking him up, but it's more of a third. He was a third round draft pick by Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians, maybe this is just coincidence, but has worked magical, magical things with third round wide receivers in the past. Emmanuel Sanders, T.Y. Hilton, the aforementioned John Brown. So it's just, it's nice to hear him wins being talked up. I think he is being overlooked and undervalued in dynasty leagues dropping into the third round I think him and uh Kenny Galladay are just guys, I hear a lot guys more that are about, being being way too undervalued in rookie drafts I hear more about players like Cooper Cup than I do about yeah. Kenny Galladay or Chad Williams guys Jason do you have any other thoughts on that one offenses. just going right. back to my previous point where you consider the source Larry Fitzgerald is such a nice guy and if he was asked a question about a wide yeah, receiver he'll be positive there I mean it, it doesn't matter I I can't imagine that he would have come out even if he thought he's not been good and said something negative. So I, I don't take it for much. Um, I do agree with the premise that Chad Williams might be undervalued considering where he went in the draft position-wise and, and round. Well, this next one I'm asking Jason, thank goodness, because I know Mike's response. ESPN Rams reporter <laughs> Alden Gonzalez. I haven't seen this. Cautions Todd Gurley could have a smaller role in the passing game this upcoming season. Pass it to me, Jason. What we know here – is that Sean McVay... Jason, pass me the ball. <laughs> Sean McVay likes Chris Thompson and that cross, Chris Thompson role, but Todd Chris, Gurley has... likes Chris Thompson in the Chris Thompson role? And that Chris oh, Thompson okay, role. Okay. Todd Gurley had 40-plus receptions last year. Jason, are you buying the, I guess what I would say, negative hype here in the sense that Gurley's numbers in the passing game might go down? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I certainly am because you you've seen it before in uh, that that type of role. I mean, you you had the Alfred Morris type. Uh, you know, that, that comes in, doesn't catch passes, and then they bring in the third down guy. They went and signed Lance Please don't Dun- call Todd Gurley Alfred Morris. <laughs> they, I can't take that. They, you <laughs> My know, they team can't take it. They signed Lance Dunbar. I think that that's an actionable, you know, you, you could see that you they need want- somebody for a IR spot. <laughs> right, yeah. They- Lance Dunbar played 13 games last year, and he, he with Jimmy Graham, he fooled came, me, came back from a devastating knee injury. Yeah, so. Uh, for me, I I completely buy it. What say you, Mike? I love it. I love I just, Lance Dunbar. Wow. <laughs> what do you love exactly? I love Lance Dunbar. I think he's okay. The in, news was. Oh, what, I'm just, so you love Dunbar. You don't like Gurley. I I'm, the jury's still out on Gurley, but I'm just talking up that the Lance Dunbar in the passing game is absolutely electric. I think he's better than Todd Gurley, and but that's a healthy Lance Dunbar if he's back to maximum full strength, then as a football team, I think you should involve Lance Dunbar in the passing game more than Todd Dunbar's Gurley. never had more than 23 targets in a season. That's, that's fine with me. I've seen what he's done yeah. with those receptions. All right, so you guys are both buying that. Um, You're talking a 12.1 average reception, 10.2. Th- those are very high numbers for a running back. Out of the Miami Herald – uh, we hear Julius Thomas is, quote, going to be a thing this year. <laughs> and the Dolphins have, quote, multiple plays designed for him. Julius Thomas returning to the Adam Gaze offense. Do you buy the hype on Julius Thomas? Yes here's, or no? Here's the thing about the Miami Dolphins. Julius Thomas is going to catch 15 touchdowns. Devontae Parker is going touchdowns. to have a breakout. Jay Ajayi is going to run the ball 300-plus times. Kenny ah, Stills has been re-signed. There's a, there's a theme here. Well, hold on, hold on. Kenyon Drake is going to be even more involved in the offense. They're going to break not only the, the <laughs> offensive record, they're going to double the amount of snaps an NFL offense has ever had. So, no. That's good. Okay, that, so no, you I know am not you buying not buy that. All right, 15 touchdowns in 20 – or what was it, 22 touchdowns in 27 games with Gase the, before? The Dolphins are winning the offseason. All right, that is it. <laughs> the hype train is pulling out of the station. We're going to move on. Before we do that, I do want to take a second. Thank today's sponsor, Omaha Steaks. You heard us talk about them on Tuesday. Look, are you looking for the perfect Father's Day gift? I just went over to Jason's house, our family, his family. We ate some Omaha Steaks fresh off the grill some pork chops. Look, if, if you don't want to wait till the last minute to find a gift, hook up with Omaha Steaks. I'm telling you right now. Right now you can get this deal, $49.99. It's the limited day Father's Day package when you go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code FANTASY in the search bar, which is, by the way, 80% off. This is something you guys have used before. Amazing deal. Here's what's in it. For less than 50 bucks, two filet mignons, two top sirloins, four chicken fried steaks, four boneless po- pork chops, Four burgers, delicious, I might add. Four Jumbo Franks, a 12-ounce package of all-beef meatballs. Just had these last night. One pound of fries, four caramel apple apple tartlets, which Jason loves. One Omaha Steak seasoning package, plus four additional burgers for free. So you can come grill out with some friends. All this for less than 50 bucks. It's unbelievable. I've tried basically everything in that entire set, and it's awesome. So if you're looking for a convenient and quick Father's Day gift, go to omahasteaks.com. Enter our code FANTASY in the search bar, add the family gift pack to your cart, and you get 80% off. That is unbelievable. Grab your dad for Father's Day, fire up the grill, enjoy some Omaha steaks. And we also want to make sure we tell you again about Pristine Auction. Look, Pristine Auction, every, everyone that's listening who has been a longtime listener, you guys already know, Pristine Auction is the place to get anything for Simon Morabilia, awesome gifts, any kind of you want to redo your living room or your you know get your uh, the place where you watch football ready. Their signed stuff is just unbelievable. When you were talking a minute ago about the Dolphins, I was like, hmm, I wonder how much a Jay Ajayi jersey is on here. And they've got a Jay Ajayi jersey going right now. It's four hours left, signed Jay Ajayi jersey for thirty one bucks right now. Whew, you can't. That does not sound legit. Are they legit? No, they are 100%. Everything is JSA certified. You you have authenticity guaranteeing that these are actual signatures. And and we we actually know the guys. We've we've met them. They're, they're JSA means they've been witnessed by and authenticated on site by JSA. 
And so, you know, pristine auction is a place where if you don't have something to buy right this second, go and just bookmark it for the future so you never forget. Uh, you know, go to pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. And when you make a free account, make sure you tell them that you heard about them through the footballers. That's right. All right, Mike. Oh, is it Are time? you ready to rumble? Hey. hey. Sound pretty good to me. Ready. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were fading. You were. Uh, Never. You were just waiting. Never. Came, came in hot. I gave you the rope By the way. That, that mailbag rope That was the mail ba. There was no G. <laughs> G. By the way, before we get into the mailbag, I do want to say this. On today's show, after the show on YouTube, we're going to get into the weeds with the Ultimate Draft Kit. We're going to teach you a little bit of and how. And David S. Pumpkins. How to, and David S. Pumpkins, <laughs> who continues to make repeat <laughs> appearances on SNL, which I love. Um but we're going to talk more about it. I've had people reach out on Twitter. They, they saw it released today. And the first thing they said is, you guys should do some shows about how to use it. So we're going to talk a little bit more in detail. We don't want to spend all the time on the show just going through each of the, the parts of the Ultimate Draft Kit. But we will do that a little bit on the show after the show today. So if you want to tune in for that, just head to YouTube. And you can. Into the mailbag we go. Foot Clan questions. If you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Leave us a voicemail. Tell you what, leave us your voicemail question or your voicemail opinion on the Ultimate Draft Kit. If you got it, if you've been using it and trying it out, let us know, 302-464-TFFB. First question here comes from Rock Bottom in SoCal. Ooh. Hope he's not talking about his fantasy team. Oh, he's talking about the restaurant. Yeah. Well, he's at delicious. rock bottom. Do you approach a draft that is three wide receiver, two running back, no flex, any differently? I guess than a standard kind of 2-2-1. Two, two, Especially in the early rounds. I have a hard time going running back in both the first and second rounds, even if the value is there, because there is usually not much left over in the third round for wide receivers. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, if you're comparing this to a uh, a league where it's 2-2 two, two and, a, and a flex, then – Wide receivers are going to be better because you have to start more of them. Um, that being said, there's still scarcity at, at running backs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from – I wouldn't treat it much different. If I've got one of those top picks, I'm still going to be taking one of the top running backs. What I like to do in, a, in any league format where I can only start two running backs – and, you know, you, there's no flex position, can't play anymore, is I love getting one of the absolute best. I'll trade for him if I need to. I'll trade up to draft. Give me a Dave Johnson, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, Dave John, me and my buddy Dave. Uh, <laughs> give me uh, L Bell, you know, uh -huh. give, give me uh, Ezekiel L, you know, give me those guys. And then I can care more about my wide receivers, load up, and just figure I'll, I'll find a running back to plug in as that second guy and get more depth, you know, for that second position late in the draft where uh, play matchups, play health, and, and I'm fine. All yeah, right. The, the, the supply demand here doesn't really change for me. It's three wide. It's no flex. It's a standard league. If it's three wide with a flex and it's PPR, I mean, you're talking a, a different situation. So it doesn't, it's not really going to change anything for me. All right, this one comes in from America Jake in Kentucky. He said last season was the first year of a keeper league that he started. Ten teams, PPR league. When should we have to declare keepers? This is a question I've seen a lot. When do you recommend uh, for round penalty, or what do you recommend for round penalties for keepers? Uh, he was thinking about doing you keep a first for a first, but everything else should have a negative one round penalty. Uh, and waiver pickups must be kept for 8th or 10th round. All right. I'll, I'll jump in here. I'll kind of work my way back through the questions. For uh, I think that waiver pickups should be kept for at least their ADP. Maybe you get a, a nice round bonus for being the wise guy and picking them up. Having a situation where someone has grabbed Beckham, David Johnson, last year Jordan Howard, these guys pop up for off of the waiver wire and now they get to be kept for an eighth or a tenth round that's just that that throws things out of balance for me 
And I lo- as far as when do you declare the keepers, the later the better, really. If you don't have a situation in your league where you're trading draft picks and all these other things, we we have draft pick trading in our keeper league, so we keep our or we we declare our keepers very early. But if you're not doing that, then just just wait as late as possible, so someone doesn't get stuck with a keeper who got hurt in in preseason week one or suspended like or, Josh Gordon or suspended. It just just Couple wait years ago. Just wait, and then the round that they're drafted in, that's fine. If you want to go just as easy as possible, if you drafted them in this round, that's what you give up. Except if it was a waiver wire pickup, then it's their ADP. Minus a round. Yeah, I, I'm also a fan of just not allowing uh, waiver wires to be kept, but, y- you know, that that's up to you and your league. I will say this, though. If you are doing pick trading, uh, you know, in a keeper league, which I would recommend, then I would say do it as early as possible, which to us is after the NFL draft. You need to know, you know, whether or not your Mark Ingram got – <laughs> you know, Alvin Kamara before Ooh. you select him as your keeper. I had a pro fighter put a put me in a Kamara once. Oh, oh it's not that's good. painful. It's unpleasant. Yeah. Break your shoulder. Uh, so yeah, I would I would prefer to do it earlier rather than later, but that's because I want more action. I want pick trading and and activity in the off season. All right, Chad in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, this is a really good question. I think applies to a lot of owners, myself included. How much draft value does a player have to offer if you hate them <laughs> for you to still draft them is essentially the question. For instance, he doesn't want Carlos Hyde or Devontae Adams in the late third. And if I lose with them, I will say that I should have known better. However, I want to win. So at what point past an ADP do you take a player simply because the value is there based on tiers from the UDK cheat sheet? It's a good question. And I, I'm going to start my answer with a simple principle that you are still playing to enjoy fantasy football. And I don't know if you guys agree with that on this advice. But for me, if you don't want to take the guy, if you don't want to risk going down with someone you hate, don't take them. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter the ADP to me. However, I think that there is a a happy medium here where you take the value and you simply work to move that player to another team because the value is so good. If you you can get a guy a round or two later than – they normally go, then you are drafting a player that should perform better than than the players on the board. So, I, you know, it's still a crapshoot, especially later rounds. So if I'm fall, the further down the list I get, the more I'm just saying blacklist the guy if you don't want him. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say that, but wouldn't if this player's fallen two rounds past what the general consensus ADP has them, and you say, well, I'm going to grab that player to trade them. Isn't the league speaking? Right, that they don't value this player the way that they quote unquote should because that's what their ADP is. So I mean, at that point, do you potentially let that player perform though? Right, and, and then, then move them, and then because move you them. just have better assets in total. For me, I, I would I would say that there when it when it is a guy that I hate and I I just say I do not believe in this player, I resign myself to saying I'm not going to have them because. I'll probably push where I would draft him like four or five rounds after where the normal consensus would draft him, which just means I'm not getting him and I'm fine with that because he brings up a great point, which you got to experience last year, Mike, Uh. with Doug Martin. You talked all this shade about Doug Martin (laughs) and how much you hated him. And then in our main league of record, because that playoff schedule was so juicy, you went out and you traded for him and then he destroyed your team and it was like, just like the, the, the uh, you know, email said, it's just like, I should have known yes. better. And it was awful. And I, and I still, I wake up in the morning and the second or third thing I think about <laughs> is freaking Doug Martin destroying my team. And I, I blew all these draft assets to get him. And I, against, I, maybe it wasn't judgment so, so much. You just eventually, you pushed away some of those uh, impressions that you had about him. And you took the consensus. That's the, the playoff schedule was so good. I know. <laughs> I totally bought it. If only in. it was played on paper entirely. I got I got snake bit from that. I, I and I deserved it. I, I think I rightfully deserved everything that happened. So I'm with with you guys. I'm sticking to my guns. If if I hate, don't want a guy, I don't believe in them. 
it's just it's just pass. It's infinite pass for me. All right, dynasty keep trade cut question from Mike Ooh. in Minneapolis. Kenneth Dixon, Dion Lewis, Josh Gordon. Oh, Mike, uh, I hate to tell you this. Here's a good I, look. For me, it was natural to say I'm just cutting Josh Gordon, right? Yeah. But then I see Dion Lewis. I think you cut Josh Gordon. Never you mind. Still, I, I, I was going to say like maybe long <laughs> term. To. Like I look at those two and I say, all right, Lewis is definitely the better player to hold on to than Josh Gordon. But if I had to pick one of those two that could possibly be a top three player in their history of their lives, it's still Gordon. But no, it's I'm cutting Gordon, trading Lewis, keeping Dixon. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's it, for your question about James White and it, we, they're talking about that hype train. That's just worse news for me uh, against Dion Lewis, where the, the the contract is a situation the Patriots can easily move on from Dion Lewis if that's the route that they want to take. That's kind of the way. Th- Things seem to trend to me that when they added Burkhead and Gillisleys, well, we're preparing to get rid of Deion Lewis. So it's it's cut Josh Gordon. It's keep Kenneth Dixon, who is, I think, in a great situation despite having the, the four-game suspension. All right. You agree with those names there, Jason? I do. <laughs> All right. Here's a good question. Rookie class question from RJ in Rochester. Rochester? I think it's Rochester, New York. In Who Rush, is the Rush, Rochester? Rochester. Russell Wilson, <laughs> who is the one rookie who will be the most owned and the most productive this season? The most Are those owned two and separate questions. Yeah, I mean they uh, could be. Well, I'll, I'll I'll say this. You know, I wanted to say Leonard Fournette because he is clearly going to be drafted by everyone in all leagues and in every situation. And I think he uh, the running back position is usually where the most productive rookie comes from. But I'm going to go with Joe Mixon because I actually believe he will be the most productive. And when it comes to Joe Mixon or Christian McCaffrey or Leonard Fournette, they're all going to be 100% owned. So the ownership's going to be the same. My rankings say that Mixon has the best fantasy year. I'll go Mixon. And I'm going to go – The I'll, I'll stick with Fournette. I agree with Jason that the 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 chance for Mixon is is greater – that, that he will be, especially in a PPR situation, that he will be the most valuable rookie. I still have my concerns about Marvin Lewis and his hesitancy you know, to use rookies despite the people. And the other backs, there's plenty yeah. of reasons to I not. picture Leonard Fournette. He's been dropped into um, – he, he's at the top of the roller coaster already, and I see Mixon is having to clink his way up the ramp before he can go downhill. And so for that reason, I'll stick with – Fournette as well. Yeah, it's opportunity. I agree. And and to speak to that, you know, what you said with Marvin Lewis and what you're saying with having to clink up the roller coaster, Gio Bernard had a great rookie season, and he did not get the start in week one. Jeremy Hill had a great rookie season, and he did well, not get the start in week one. It yeah, was a little it was bit w- different situation. Gio Bernard was used. All right, odds, odds that Mixon starts game one, I'll put at 5%. Start game yeah. one? Yeah. I'll put it at – yeah, I'll go two percent. Yeah, I would go probably twenty percent, but definitely a a, a, a minority. Let's say that now the, the difference Hill. though that Jeremy pe- Hill could still be moved. That people forget for is Gio Bernard. Yeah, he did have a great rookie season. He was the backup though the the whole time to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. The Jeremy Hill situation was it wasn't until Gio Bernard went down with the injury that that Hill really started to explode. He had those huge monster games, and even once Gio came back. There was the drama every single week of of Marvin Lewis saying, "Well, Gio's still the starter," and and he fought with that, even though Jeremy Hill was the better player that year. And eventually, Hill won out at the end of the season. But it's just saying it took it took Gio's injury to get Hill into those starter carries. Yeah, I mean, even a player like David Johnson was not. Yeah, he was behind. I mean, he was Ellington. clearly the best player on that team. But coaching philosophies. You know, the trust, whole, the trust uh, rookies coming in and, and being able to pick everything up. It's a challenge no matter who you are. And if you don't have the, you know, top five pick draft capital, it's it's more rare to see them start week one. How to do a slow draft question from Todd in St. Louis, Missouri. What is the best way to organize a slow draft through emails? Everyone in the league is a firefighter making setting up a live draft hard due to working different shifts and running emergency calls. Well, some of this can be done through uh, different providers. Like uh, if, if you're using um, 
my football league my fantasy league my fantasy league yeah, yes my, fo- <laughs> uh, my fantasy league.com they have an option to do a slow draft and that takes care of it for you it'll email everyone out every time someone makes a pick um and and the way it works is you get an eight hour timer and that timer shuts off at night to not screw the people into a 2 a.m. pick. I know we did. Um, that's a nice way to do it. And we used uh, we used Facebook, a Facebook group last time. Yeah, that's that's what we just did for our rookie draft. And it, it was fun because not only can you have basically a thread where you just tag the person who's up next once a pick is made, but you can comment and bash people much easier with uh, images and with GIFs yeah. uh, to mock their picks. And that is a delight. Yeah. Yep, and I would say a Google Doc is another possible way. If you just you could combo those, you could tell people they're on the clock on Facebook, and then just have them go put their pick in uh, in a Google Doc. And if you, you have all, something else, say if you're all firefighters, you're going to be uh, you understand the the situation that your your friends are in, and no one's going to get mad about the picks. And for a timer, just just don't be a jerk. Let's get it done. Fair enough. Kevin in Rhode Island says, "Hey guys, great show. I've been listening for three years now." And I just ordered the UDK Thanks, hashtag Kevin. Foot Clan title. Thank you. I have a keeper question. I'm allowed to keep one player drafted after the tenth round, and my options are Isaiah Crowell, Amir Abdullah, Choo Choo, or Tyler Eifer. Thanks, easy, guys. Easy. Hope yeah. to hear it on the show. Well, you did. Here you go. It's uh, it's Isaiah Crowell. It's you. certainly Isaiah Crowell. He's a guy that I've been slightly cooling on, but the only reason I've been cooling on him is only because his average draft position has gone from when he was like, you know, a 10th rounder to now he's going up in the second round. I'm, I'm a little worried at that value, but if I could get Crowell in the second, I think he's the best player of this group. Uh, it's Crowell without a doubt. It's still Crowell for me, but I, I am rising even more on the Abdullah breakout. I think it's happening this year. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like Abdullah too, but it's not really a good comparison to me. I mean, Crowell's already kind of yeah, that's stepped what I'm saying. into that I'm top gonna, I'm going to take Crowell. And I mean, we had even – There more. was a little bit more uh, – <laughs> little hype train going on Crowell today. I didn't get to it in our earlier segment, but Hugh Jackson talked about, hey, go look at my tape. Watch how oh, much – He said, look at the tape? That's what he said. He goes, go watch oh. my tape. Look how go much – go, look, the head coach said that. Look how much I run the ball. Isaiah Crowell was the only running back in the top 15 last – or the top 20 last year with under 205 carries, and that is expected to change. So if the improved offensive line plus Hugh Jackson plus – I mean, Isaiah Crowell is what, 24? He's, yeah, he's a young gun. And you throw in the fact that it's a more hype train stuff, but if, if Deshaun Kaiser is your starter – and it was kind of a, a consensus that Kaiser can be good, but he's certainly not ready yet for the NFL. So if Kaiser is starting week one, you better have a strong running game while he's figuring things out. I'm hearing good stuff about Kessler. Oh, that that's news to me. I have not heard anything good about Kessler. Yeah, I, I guess he did. I even he gave did his a, mom a call. Yeah, his mom. Nothing, is, nothing good to say. Nothing good to say. <laughs> Look, Kessler, I, I'm going to give – Here's two minutes on Cody Kessler. Oh, this is all you get. You weren't Cody Kessler. I don't, I'm timing you. He wasn't part of the UDK videos. He didn't make the <laughs> no. He no, didn't he make the cut. Here's two minutes on Cody Kessler. I think if you look at his statistics, and I did this with uh, Terrell Pryor earlier in this offseason when I was looking at how good or bad Pryor was compared to RG3 and McCown. He was. I mean, Kessler's numbers when I was looking at the difference that Pryor will have going to Washington, the deep ball accuracy, it paid the price with RG3 and McCown and not so much with Kessler. Kessler was pretty darn accurate. He's a rookie, right? Rookie thrown into the fire of Cleveland. This offseason, he's done a bunch of work to get his arm strength up. You heard it from Hugh Jackson. You heard it from those that have watched him at camp. I'm not saying anything beyond the fact that I think Cody Kessler had what you would consider to be an objectively okay rookie year on a very bad team, now you get year two. It, for me, he's definitely starting the year. It's not going to be Deshaun Kaiser. Um, but that's there's my two minutes. Yeah, Co- no, I Cody, think- I believe in you. Um, I'm talking to your mom. Oh, and do it. Ben, ben Cummins is so happy right now. Does he like Kessler? Yeah. All right, Ben. <laughs> yeah, Kessler, Kessler is better than he gets credit for. The, the problem with him will end up being <clears throat> Kaiser, who they drafted to – 
replace him. But I, I agree. I mean, I, I know his yards, you know, per attempt weren't that high. Of course, he's a rookie, but he had 65% completion yeah that was impressive and it, that was with very you can't hey mike you can't give credit to sam bradford's magical completion percentage <laughs> and not give it to cody kessler for having a darn good rookie season in fairness cody kessler darn, didn't break the all-time and, nfl oh, okay. record yeah, they're, for they're, having a darn are, good completion percentage rookie season okay that's fine yeah. but if you if your bar for quarterback is is the, he's the most okayest then <laughs> Cody Kessler's your guy. He threw six touchdowns, Mike. That's that's great. It's huge. That's great. I, yeah, I mean, fair. <laughs> 1,300 yards passing doesn't get it done. I And I don't have it in front of me. 92 pass rating. I believe that's something that Jameis Winston's yet to achieve in his career. You heard it here first, folks. Cody Kessler, just, just what, greater than Is this than the hill symbol? you want to die on? <laughs> uh, no, Jameis not Winston. at all. <laughs> get off me. <laughs> No, I don't want to die on the Cody oh. Kessler Hill and watch he'll flame out. Yeah, because you would die soon on that <laughs> hill. That's the problem. Uh, hey, Brooks, um, we need a UDK video on Kessler. <laughs> no, we don't. Don't no. do it. Not going to do we'll it. Moving on. We'll, we'll get that All recorded right. after the show. Thank you. I'll, I'll be alone. Uh, Brandon Gilbertson in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Pick two to keep. Mark Davis Bryant, Sammy Watkins, Devontae Adams. Oh, man. His other wideouts are already Evans, Dez, and Jeffrey. It's if, if it's that, I'm going home run. Martavis and Watkins. Really? You're gonna... No, no, no. Okay. Come on. Watkins and Adams. I feel like even I, the, the captain of our Martavis train, <laughs> I can't keep him over Adams and Watkins even – so it would not shock me if he outperforms both of them. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me either, but I am so genuinely happy to hear you two both select so so easily Sammy, Sammy Watkins and Devontae Adams because I, I, I need to push who's, Sammy Watkins a little harder. Who's played more here. games in the past two years? <laughs> Sammy, Sammy Watkins or Martavis? Probably gonna be pretty close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, Adams doesn't get me excited, but He's he, provi he provides does. sustenance. Okay, sometimes you just eat food. And you know what you do? You trade Devontae Adams for Martavis plus something else. Sure. That's how you. That's how that, you deal with no, this you're problem. You're darn right. That's the way to think. Get about Martavis it. on your team. All right. Last question here. I am the commissioner. This is a. Uh, I don't have. I don't have a name for it. Name. So this one came in. redacted. Um, I'm the commissioner for one of my leagues, and I'm interested in changing some settings for the upcoming season. Right now, it is a 10-team standard scoring league. My question is, where I, as a commissioner, should have the authority to simply change a setting and inform the league versus changes that I need to put to a league vote? For example, I think that expanding the league to 12 teams or changing roster composition would require, require a majority vote. But what about changes to scoring, such as going from non-PPR to half point, or changing defensive scoring to be based on yards allowed rather than points? Or to the waiver wire process where I would want to switch to fab. How democratic should this process be? Thank you very much. Love the podcast. I have thoughts, guys. If you want to weigh in first or you want me to weigh in. Here's, here's my thoughts for the commissioner authority. I appreciate the questions. Nice, thorough, thought-out question. But the answer is you got to have majority for everything you just talked about. And I'll slightly disagree with you. If you are – I think it depends on the league that you are in and the level of experience in fantasy football the players in your league have because there's a big difference between a Democratic vote in a friends league you've been in for a while and an office pool where people are learning to play and maybe don't understand the implications of those changes. That's fair. And sure. so I think obviously no matter what decision you make on these – do it in a way that isn't like lording the authority of the league over your league mates. It seems stupid, but you see commissioners do this all the time. And also you like slam their fists and uh, say, this is gross. the way it is. And, and if you are in one of those office type leagues where you think, okay, we're, we're going to move to full point this year. You, you, this should go without saying you must announce that and tell people that the league <laughs> settings have changed. If you're going to go ahead and change it. You can't just be right like right after the draft. I'm gonna add, right after I'm the draft. Add one. No, see what you do. You wait to see how carry. the draft ends up, and then you adjust the score. You have, <laughs> you, you go one tight end, two flex, and then grab all the tight ends, and then at the end, that's when you announce. Oh, this was a 
This was a tight end premium league. Did you guys not get the memo? Mm. It's five point PPR. So most of the advice we just gave is true. The last part was false. Or was yeah, it? Yeah, it was. No, it was. So hopefully, uh, I appreciate you thinking about that. That's a good way to think and ask those questions before you do all of that. Um, but for I, the majority of what you specifically mentioned, those are all things we would vote about in our league. Yes. A hundred percent. Because so, I'm, I'm approaching this from, this is a league that has been going on for more than two years. Yeah. Yep. And if that's the case, they're, the people who are in it are in it because they enjoy playing the way that it's played. So to, to change it on people just isn't, isn't fair, even though these are the right changes to make. All right. Well, that is it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for subscribing, for reviewing the show on iTunes, for supporting us in all of the many ways that you do. We sincerely appreciate that, and we encourage you to check out the show after the show on YouTube if you're interested in learning more about the Ultimate Draft Kit that just released today. Whee! You can learn more about that at ultimatedraftkit.com, and uh, we're very excited about what we've been able to put together this year. I'm going to tell you this right now. Last year, we polled everybody that purchased the Ultimate Draft Kit. The results of that polling was a, a rating on the kit of, of over 8.5 out of 10. And we listened to the feedback, and some of the feedback was, hey, we want this thing to be dynamic and great on mobile devices. And we've done that. We've added it this year. Another piece of the puzzle that we wanted to do was not rest on the laurels of last year's draft kit, but basically improve it across the board, including adding the reception perception content, um, we have all of the player profile videos in there in the draft kit. And we've made lots of different improvements. I know, you know, Jason's been working tirelessly. I'll toot your horn. You can just um, turn his mic off, bro. Hey, because he'll toot. Hold your, on, hold on. Hold, this hold, is a family hold, friendly show, fellas. Echo. <laughs> this, these, I don't like what's Dude, going on here. We need to turn the lights out or <laughs> what's, what's happening right now? Close the show. You know, everything was going so good. And no, I decided. It wasn't. No, before no, that, I, mean, <laughs> I made a mistake. There are problems in the. All right. I'm not tooting anybody's we, horn. We gotta, all right. We got to get out I'm of here. I'm not tooting anybody. All right. I'll hit the button. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Jesus, Jesus See you face. on the show after the show. Hey, and, uh, Sometimes a host just hosts and they don't know what they're saying. Check out fantasyjocks.com for your trophy needs. The promo code is footballers. Goodbye. Well, my Twitter's ruined. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.